In the previous video, we began creating StockBot, an application that allows us to retrieve stock quotes and stock charts from within Slack. So far, we've built the chart slash command, but haven't yet built the quote slash command, which should receive a stock, stock ticker symbol and return a quote. So to do that, we're gonna go to our Slack API and we're gonna go to our application and create a new slash command. We're gonna copy the endpoint that we already used in the chart command. We're gonna create a new command and do slash quote, and then we'll copy this into the request URL. And so this should hit the same Chalice application. We're gonna type a description. So we're gonna say, get a quote for a symbol and give it a usage hint, and then hit save. This command will not reappear in, in our Slack workspace until we reinstall the app, which will update it. And once that's done, if we go back to our Slack channel, we can type slash quote and see the information that we just provided. So I'm gonna type slash quote and you see I get a 500 internal service error. That's because our application doesn't yet handle the payload posted uh, to Chalice. So I'm gonna go back to the code and add some new functionality here. We only have one endpoint called index right now, but that endpoint can receive multiple commands. And those commands will come in as uh, command equals here, which we're already parsing. So what I'm gonna do, since this only handles charts right now, I'm gonna refactor this code and make two new functions. And each function is going to handle one command and we'll make a mapping to those commands in a dictionary. So we'll make a function called chart and a function called quote. They'll both receive a request that is already parsed and we'll call those functions uh, depending on what the command is. So to do that, I'm gonna make a new dictionary called commands and you can put this in a separate module. I'm just gonna put it uh, in line here. So we'll have a dictionary called commands that maps to a function. So the slash chart command maps to chart and the slash quote command maps to quote. And so we'll call whichever function uh, is mapped to the command that comes in. Then we're gonna refactor this code by breaking down the request parsing. So we'll make a new function called parse request that receives a request. And we're gonna put this request parsing that we've already done inside of here and then when a request comes in, we can just do r equals parse request app.current request. Then we're gonna call the appropriate command. So we already have a commands dictionary. So we'll do response equals commands. And then we'll do the current command that's in the dictionary. So we'll do r.command and then we're going to call this as a function and we're gonna pass it in the parse request like so. So each command here needs to return a response based on the request that came in. So since this charts functionality already does that, I'm gonna go ahead and paste this stuff into the chart function and you'll see it ret retrieves a request and then assigns it to some variables, command and symbol, and just returns the response that we need. And this simplifies our logic here. So we'll, we'll return the response return from our command. Now I wanna make sure that still works after the refactoring, so I'm gonna hit the endpoint again. It says could not connect to server, maybe because I'm not running it yet. So I'm gonna run it. And let's try to hit the endpoint. And you see after the refactoring, we have the same result. So now let's just put the functionality we need into the quote command. So this is just gonna return quotes using the same structure here. So I'm gonna do this and we can refactor out the responses as well. I'm just gonna reuse the same one for now. So this command is going to receive uh, stock quotes. It's gonna get stock quotes from IEX trading. So I'm gonna use this site IEX trading and there's actually an IEX cloud, which lets developers build on top of financial data. And this company is really cool because they expose financial uh, data to individual developers at a very low price, even a very generous free tier, which we're going to use. 
Uh, and this is great because usually financial data is very expensive to access or you have to do things like screen scrape Yahoo or Google Finance, which is very unreliable and changes over time. So it's nice to have a consistent API that's provided free of charge. So I already have an account on IEX Cloud that I'm logged in as. And you'll see we have API tokens, which I'm gonna need. I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard and just put it up here for now. API token equals, uh, I'll just call it token and I'll make that a string and I'll delete that later. Okay, so I have an API token and you see there's some API docs here and this shows documentation on all the different endpoints they provide. So you see we can get data on cash flow, earnings, estimates, and so forth. But I'm not gonna use the API directly. They've actually created a Python package that makes a wrapper around all the request logic. So I'm gonna use this and it's called IEX Finance. And if you look for that, there's actually a Python SDK that we're going to use. And so I'm gonna add that package to our requirements.txt file so that it's a dependency. So to use that, I'm gonna go to requirements and you see I added IEX finance. And then if you pip install the requirements text, it'll get those dependencies for you and download them, download them and they're ready to use. So let's use the library. Um, I've already taken a peek at the documentation that shows how to use this. You see there's just some functions and they need to, a token passed in to uh, get the data back. So you can see I can import from IEX Finance stocks. Uh, I can create a stock object and pass it a symbol and a token and do get quote. So let's do that. So I'm gonna import the package at the top. Uh, I've imported stock and now I'm gonna go down to my stock quote function and figure out how to use this. So I have a stock symbol already. So now I can just do stock equals stock and then the request has a symbol in it. Sorry, the request is called, has text in it, which is actually a symbol. And I'm gonna use that. And then I'm also gonna pass in a token. And that token is ready to go. And then now our quote equals stock.getQuote. And then I can print out that quote just to see what it looks like. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna hit the quote endpoint by uh, using a different slash command that Slack will send in and I get an error and let's see what happened. You requested a chalk, stock chart for symbol. So let's see what the error is. Um, you requested a stock chart for uh, and then this on line 57. Oh, okay, so we're not calling it symbol here. Uh, we used request text. So let's just do symbol equals request text and then pass in the symbol here and then we'll have a symbol variable. Okay, and then we'll get the quote. And so now I'm gonna hit the endpoint again. You requested a stock chart for Apple. Um, what we want is a stock quote. A quote for Apple. Okay, cool. And so we printed it out. Let's see if we got a response. Okay, so we have this dictionary, which is great, has exactly what we need. Um, we have different prices, latest price, uh, closing time, a bunch of different information and a change percentage that we can use. So let's use that information and format that as a string and return it back to our bot and we'll be done. So I'm gonna do uh, text equals um, latest price, price is, and then it is, and I'm, I've already thought through these placeholders and we'll see what goes in there. Um, so this is gonna show the, the dollar change and the percentage change, and we're gonna format that string. So to format the string, we're gonna get our quote and put in the company name, and then we're gonna do the latest price and then we're gonna do, we're gonna create a new variable called up down to show whether it went up or down. We're gonna show the change. 
and we're going to show the change percent change percent and that we're going to need to multiply that times 100 and then we're going to show an emoji as well okay and so let's do the emoji part and the change part so if quote change is greater than zero then we can do an up down equal to up and we can set an emoji in slack equal to money mouth face otherwise we can do up down equals down and then our emoji equals cold sweat because we're nervous because our stocks are down okay and so now we have some text that's formatted company name latest price um, let me see if I put enough placeholders one two three four five and I think I need one more here and we're gonna just do the text that we formatted here and see if we can get that response I'm sure we'll have maybe one error but we'll fix it you requested a quote for Apple and our text should be there and let me restart the server in case it didn't update okay Apple Inc latest price is 242 is up two dollars and 43 cents one percent makes sense money mouth face so I think that works and so now let's go ahead and deploy it and see if our slack bot works in the cloud so it's creating the deployment package this should automatically handle the requirements package that we created um, and add it to requirements.txt. So it should have access to IEX Finance. Uh, and so this deployment package might take a second longer because it's probably um, installing this package. So I paused for a second because this one took a little bit longer to deploy uh, since it needed to install some extra packages. But now that it's deployed, I should be able to go back to my Slack bot in my channel. And if I type slash quote Apple, it should hit IEX trading, retrieve the quote, and return it back. So you'll see now it says Apple Inc. latest price is 242, and it's up 0.9%, and it uses my emoji here. And if I do another quote of, let's say, lift, which I think would be down, it will show my sad face. Looks like we need a little bit of rounding, but it's pretty good for now. Um, that's it. Thank you. And until next